All right, guys, let's take a look at a fan favorite. This is the Seiko Alpinist. This particular one is the SPB117. And I know there's a ton of people out there that prefer, like, probably the one that was, like, most notably, you know, uh, a fan favorite was the SARB017, the green dial one. There were some models even before that, and there's certainly models after that, you know, the blue one, and then there's all these newer ones. Some without the inner rotating bezel, this one still has that. But this black dial here is kind of like a safe bet. So you still get the cathedral handset. And you get the inner rotating bezel, 200 meter water resist, sapphire crystal. You get the 6R35 movement, and you get that great case size that a lot of people really like. And just overall is a very good everyday type wear watch. So case size on this, I measure 39.5 millimeter, 46 lug to lug. So that's where it gets a lot of its comfort for smaller wrist is that really short lug to lug. 13 millimeter thick. You can see you have a display case back. And then up to the flat sapphire crystal, and it has a date magnifier up there as well. 20 millimeter lug width, bracelet tapers down to 18 millimeter. You can see this is a used watch, so uh, big thanks to Xander for sending this over. Simple fold over clasp, double pushers, uh, and two micro adjust. So that's pretty much you know its dimensions and everything in a nutshell. The rest of it is very familiar as far as the Alpinist line goes with the handset. Obviously there's no gold tone or gilded here. This is all silver. Um, retail on this was 750. I see them trading for around the 550 mark. And I think that's a good, um, a good price point for these is around that $500 mark. So you can see applied, I, I think they're applied. I don't know, I can't tell if they're pressed through. You never really know with these Seiko dials, honestly, but they look like applied indices. None of them are loomed. Those are all full polished to match that handset. So it gives it an interesting look there. There are little loom pips, little circles at the fives all the way around. So you can see they're just kind of integrated into the dial. Pretty cool, pretty slick. They're almost, they don't really protrude up too much either. So and then I like that cathedral handset. I know some people could take it or leave it, but I think it's definitely iconic to the Alpinist lineup. A little bit of splash of red there with the 20 bar. And then the red on the inner rotating compass there is noticed in a couple spots, typically where the north is. So due north, northwest, and northeast. And then that inner rotating bezel is non-screw down. So it's just, it's free turning all the time. Um, I don't notice any play or anything in it. It's, it lines up good. You know, it uh, functions properly. There's no notches or anything like that. So I don't know. I wouldn't really use it a ton, but I know there are people that do use it. Screw down crown. Crown size on this is about 5.9 millimeter, so just under 6. Plenty of traction on it. Um, I didn't look to see, because I didn't size this. It already came pre-sized from Xander. So I'm assuming it's pin and collar. Yeah, it looks like it's pin and collar. Um, so pretty simple. I know some people gripe about the pin and collar. I don't really have a problem with it. So there it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. So you can, it's a little tight on me right here. I would probably add a link, but I'm not going to bother with it. Um, I can put it on just for this purpose of the video for sure. So you can see on my seven and a quarter, it wears fine. And it certainly would wear even down to a smaller wrist size. Also partly due with the uh, solid end link, the center part is, um, you know, it articulates and it can lay flat. So it's going to drape like if you have a smaller wrist, it's not going to overshoot with that solid center link that you see on a lot of bracelets for watches. It's not going to extend the lug to lug width. It's 46 millimeter. That's so you're not going to have any problems there. Um, let's kill the lights and check out the loom. And I'll see if I can put some sort of link in the description, but I don't know where you buy these actually. So, um, because it is a made in Japan one. I'm not sure of the availability on these. But you can see even though those uh, little loom pips all the way around are small, but Seiko loom is just overpowered. So like it, it's still totally legible. Uh, there's no real you know indicator to differentiate the 12 or, or give you a position. But um, you know if it's on your wrist, you should be able to tell which way the watch is facing. So I guess you could uh, deduct the 3 o'clock being a no loom there, and uh, that could help you, I guess. I don't know. Usually, you know, you double up on the 12 or something. But regardless, I think it's a great watch. It could easily be an everyday watch for a lot of people. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next bit.